A few years back when I was teaching in classroom, I remember this incident where I was talking about negative work in physics. Negative work is when you push on an object in one direction, but while pushing that object moves in the opposite direction. So I introduced the idea and asked people like, can you think of some real life example of that? There was absolute silence for a while because it's, it's a little weird, right? Like you're pushing on something in, in one direction, it goes in the opposite direction. But then one girl, very shy girl lifted her hands and her eyes were glowing and she said, I had an example. And I was like, I was very curious to hear her example. She said, what about a wind up car? Think about it, she said. She said, okay, we push it behind, but then when you let it go, it goes forward. Isn't that a good example? Well, I told her that that's not a correct example and I gave the reason for that. The reason is in that wind up car, when she was pulling it behind, while she was pulling it behind, the car went backwards, right? In the same direction. So that's positive work. It's only when she let go of it, when she's no longer pushing it anymore, that's when it went forward. So that time she is not doing any work anymore. So this was not an example of negative work. Now the question I have for you is, did I do the right thing by telling her that she was wrong and by explaining it to her very nicely, very politely that why it was wrong? Like, what do you think? Well, back then I thought, of course, yeah, as, as, as a teacher, my job is to tell people when they are wrong, it's science. But today I think I, I disagree. I think today I would say I didn't do the right thing. Because of what I did, I caused three problems unknowingly. Problem number one is by telling her she was wrong in front of everyone, in front of her friends, I put her on a spot. Now, sure, you know, we're supposed to be objective. It's not about people, it's about science, but hey, we're talking to kids over here. You know, we're talking to teenagers, right? We need to consider that emotional thing as well. Um, nobody likes to be wrong in front of a huge crowd un unless they are like super, super matured, right? So because of that, I put her on a spot, surely discouraged her probably. As a result of that, I am risking her future participation, right? In the future, she may not participate. But guess what? Interestingly, even if she was right, and I had told her that she was right, and I let's say I appreciated her, that also is a problem. <laughs> you know why? If you are right in front of 100 people and somebody appreciates you for being right, the next time somebody asks you a question, you will think twice because you'll say, hey, I have a reputation to maintain now. I can't be wrong because everybody clapped for me that time. I was right. So you will think twice because now your reputation is at stake and you want to be sure that you'll be right, which means again, I am risking future participation. So just by saying that she was right, or she was wrong, or for that matter, she was right, by appreciating, I'm actually risking future participation. Problem two is that I gave away the answer. As a science teacher, my job is not really to tell whether things are right or wrong. And this is the important part. Many people don't get it. Even I didn't get it for a long time. As a science teacher, my job is to give people enough tools give people enough information so that they themselves can figure out whether it is right or wrong. That is the true job of a teacher. Do everything, do inspire, motivate, give all the tools, but at the end of the day, create experiences in such a way that students themselves can arrive at the right answer. So by just immediately telling the answer away, I took that learning opportunity from her. Problem number three is that this became a one-on-one -on -one conversation. She came up with an example and I told her that it was wrong and done. The rest of the class, they were like passively listening, right? I took away the learning opportunity from every one of them, not just her. I didn't leverage the collective, in, you know, the collective knowledge of the entire classroom. What is interesting is that something as simple as telling somebody that it is wrong can actually cause so much problems and we, do, we never think about it as teachers because we're never trained on it because that's how our teachers were. So the question now could be, knowing what I know today, what would I have done differently? So here are two things that I would do differently. If I would go back in time, the first thing I would do after she had answered that question is I would acknowledge and thank her for participating but acknowledge her thinking process. It's important you know, because she didn't just give an example, she also explained why she thought that it was the right answer. And as a science teacher, I think I should reinforce and tell everybody that science is not about being right or wrong. Science is mostly about thinking. I mean, what do scientists do? The scientists are not known for getting it right all the time. In fact, they are wrong most of the times. Scientists are known for their ability to think. And if I want to create that kind of a culture in my classroom, I need to acknowledge the thinking process. So that's the first thing I would do. I would say, forget about right or wrong. 
but it's a thinking process is what matters. And so I would acknowledge that. The second thing I would do is I would ask the rest of the class to comment on it, either to build up on it. If they, if they agree with this example, they can support this and they can chime in. Or if they disagree with these, this example, they can critique it, right? So I would ask the rest of the class to contribute as well. Now, what is the impact of doing these two things? Again, there are three very positive impact. Point number one, since no longer the focus is on being right or being wrong, then I'm not putting people on the spot, which means more chances of future participation. Everybody knows it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. All that matters is whether I have some thinking process behind it. All that, that's all that matters. And so more chances of people participating, which means more engagement in your classroom. The second powerful impact is now students are talking to each other and trying to either convince each other or debate. This is powerful because when you're talking to a teacher, it's a different kind of conversation. You're just like trying to give the right answer. Versus when you're trying to talk to your friends, you're actually trying to convince each other, right? So there's a real discussion that's happening and this actually improves communication skills, which is also very, very important for today's world. The third powerful impact of this is that because the focus is now mostly on thinking, and not about being right or being wrong. Everybody has to think and have an answer, uh, have a rationale, have a reason behind what they are saying, which means this improves critical thinking. Another important aspect that you would need to survive in today's world, critical thinking is super, super important. So what is the summary over here? The summary is as a teacher, when you're asking questions, don't just have the goal. The goal in the mind should not be about just like asking right or wrong. The goal should be about understanding what students are thinking, right? If you ask a question with that as your goal, whatever students reply, you can use that to have more discussions and to direct your instruction, direct your teaching accordingly. The examples will come from the students. The analogies will come, comparisons will come from the students. This means almost every single class on that same topic would be different depending upon who you are teaching. What an amazing rich experience that would be one for the students and for you as a teacher as well. You would grow so much, you would get so much input from all these, uh, all these students and uh, your growth will be amazing, right? Here's a recording of a recent class that I recorded. I took this class for third grade students. I am teaching them about the concept of levers. And I'm, 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 and I'm doing a lot of discussions and oh my God, these people blew my mind away. I never thought that third grade students would be able to think so critically and communicate so well. So if you want to see this in action, whatever I'm talking about, yeah, click here.